Okay, I think I started the recording. So this is a demonstration of entering SLO assessment. This is being created for College of Alameda, uh, but any it, the process should be very similar for anyone else at Peralta. So to enter your SLO assessment, you start by going to peralta.curricinet.com. If you go to the website, it'll take you to this place. And you should have an account. Uh, if you don't have an account, then please connect to your, uh, contact your assessment coordinator so that they can facilitate creation of your account. Um, once you have an account, you should log in using your Peralta account. And it'll land you in some place. If you want to look at examples of other assessments created by, uh, entered by other faculty in your, at your college, you can go to click on curriculum button, then assessment. Make sure you uncheck my proposals and then search for any active uh, assessment. So, and uh, if you want to see your college only, you might want to filter down to your college. Now, I want to enter astronomy SLO assessment because we have only one, and I've been meaning to do this for a while. I have a data from my course that I taught in fall 2020, and um, I'd like to enter that assessment here as a demonstration. Uh, once you have all the material gathered, it's a relatively quick process. It's uh, um, So let me do that. I've already done the work of gathering all the material. I have my course here <laughs> for the uh, five-digit course ID and the student learning outcomes and all that stuff. And I've also uh, looked through some of the assessments that'll, add up, that'll uh, sufficiently uh, assess the SLO number two, explain and discuss basic astronomical phenomena. So in CurriculumNet, the basic paradigm is that everything is a proposal. So in order to enter your assessment, you go to create proposal. And in the drop-down menu under proposal type, you need to scroll down a little bit to go to your SLO assessment. So there are seven levels of assessment plus the one for non-instructional area outcomes. It's the assessment level one that most faculty will be interacting with. This is where you enter your course level SLO assessment. I'm going to choose that. And if you're at other campuses, it'll be Laney, Merit, BCC. Next. For most faculty, uh, finding proposal is probably not useful at this point. That's to um, uh, start by cloning another proposal. If this is one of your first proposals, then you should just uh, start from scratch. Uh, your division and your department, most the faculty will have access to a few. And here, I'm just going to enter a minimal title, and then I will edit this later. Because sometimes it's hard to remember all the elements of the name convention, so I'll do that later. <laughs> Let me go to next. Um, create proposal. So this is where I'm dropped in uh, to, um, the, to create proposal, um, or to assess <laughs> the SL of using this proposal. So let me first select the semester that I'm assessing. So this is going to be for fall 2020. Um, I know it's a while back, but um, and uh, I looked up the numbers, uh, the number of students on my roster um, here when I was logged in was uh, 23 students. And um, wait, that's the roster. And the, uh, the students who are being assessed, who had an assignment that I could look at was 21 students. And uh, when I counted earlier, it was 20. Uh, so this number comes from the earlier work I did in, in looking at the outcome of, um, so I picked a particular question as a way to look at this, uh, look at the SLO, assess, SLO that I'm going to be assessing. So the SLO I'll be assessing is from astronomy one 
um, the current version. Yeah, that, and that's also active for 2020. And the second one, explain and discuss basic astronomical phenomena. And when I looked at it, and I looked at the assignments I've given, the one that seems to fit the description best is the open-ended question for Module 3, which covers uh, astronomical phenomena like uh, uh, the orbit of moon and tidal effects, that sort of stuff. It's an open-ended question, so students could choose to describe what they were interested in. And looking at this question, um, this is the and looking at the grading for the question, this is the results I've seen. Um, so back when I was teaching this class, I uh, gave the scores. Uh, most of the students got five out of five. And the description is five is excellent understanding, four is good understanding, three is fair understanding, and then it goes down from there. So uh, for the success criteria, I would say that I want most students, so let's say, 90% of the students to get four or five, so good or fair understanding. So counting all these, I had 20 students who meet success criteria. So that's the number for 20 here. Uh, if you, um, a lot of times when I'm assessing SLO, sometimes uh, I leave this blank the first to pass. And then when I enter assessment methods and results, after I've done that, then I know what to enter for this. So, it, so that might be the way you go uh, sometimes. So let me save this for now, and I'm going to um, <clears throat> have the correct assessment report title <coughs> that's consistent with our um, naming uh, convention. So let me just go to curriculum. I'm middle clicking on assessment so that I can just uh, search um, one of the <laughs> existing assessments. Okay, astronomy one. Okay, that's the five digit course code and then SLO number and then the semester. Okay, I'm gonna try to remember that. So astronomy one, the five digit course number that comes from here, 45596, 45596. And this is gonna be SLO two and fall 2020. Yeah. And uh, if I go back to the search view and search again, it'll show that updated uh, one for the draft that I'm currently working on. So the SLO assessment module, it's organized so that it, um, it's, it works best if you use these tabs to work your way down uh, from top to bottom. So I uh, finished the cover, and then now I'm going to go to assessment methods and tools. So the assignment that I use, it's a timed assessment, so the description of exam works best. And I'll say uh, in module three, uh, in, in each module, I ask um, open-ended question for students to uh, elaborate on the topics we cover in the module in each module find the assessment um, in module three we cover the solar system um, including the astronomical phenomenon uh, described in SLO2 uh, so, I um, to um, uh, I I think that's fine. Um, so and uh, I get this question uh, from time to time. You know, uh, who is this for? What kind of detail do you need? Um, so one, the person it is for is future you. Um, so in five years from now, as you. Uh, or three years from now, as you look at how you want to potentially change how you teach and um, and uh, things that you might want to improve with the uh, regular assessment cycle. Um, it, it'll be that future you, three years from now, that will be looking at this and trying to figure out how 
um, how things might have changed and what uh, things you might do differently to uh, hopefully improve things for your students. So uh, put whatever detail that you feel might be useful to feature you. Um, and, uh, you know, three years from now, you will get a sense of if you put in enough detail, then as you do as, go through another assessment cycle, then that's when you will have a better sense of how much either additional detail or maybe less detail you would want to put. So I have that uh, success criteria. So uh, there's a kind of an example description here. So um, I would say the question is graded on a five point two rubric, uh, four out of five them in a good understanding, and two five out of five meaning excellent understanding. Um, most, uh, maybe 90% of uh, students uh, should uh, be receiving 4 out of 5 or 5 out of 5 on the uh, open-ended question. Yeah, so that would be the success criteria. And uh, so for the attachment, that's what I took these screenshots for. I'm going to, oh, well, I'm going to attach the first screenshot as the question that I've given. So let me do select, and then desktop, oops. Um, I, I, I think it's fine. <laughs> um, yeah. Load the files, save. View file. And yeah, that's how it should look. Um, okay, so that's the assessment methods and tools, assessment results. So the delivery method for this class was 100% online. It was intercession actually. <laughs> so the result and analysis. Um, so 16 students received um, five out of five. Uh, four students received the four out of five. Um, one student received uh, three out of five. And I think I had the two students who didn't take the assessment at all. Um, uh, reviewing the responses, um, some of the responses uh, even the ones who receiving four out of five were more a list of topics uh, covered in module than uh, 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 well synthesized um, um, uh, statement on um, interesting topics slash astronomical astronomical phenomena in the uh, covered in the module um, and the, the rest of it I'll say <laughs> put it in learning gaps um, it uh, so and, you know, sometimes uh, as you assess, you might say no learning gap. That's perfectly fine. If you don't see any learning gaps, then, yeah, please say no learning gap. That's fine. Uh, here, as I look at the responses, I thought maybe I should give more guidance because it's, uh, when it's uh, like a list of topics, then it doesn't quite feel like a student had a, a way to think about what interested them. Um, so, so... I guess so I would say, well, most students did a great job uh, reading through the module material and learning topics covered in the module uh, based on some of the open-ended question responses. Um, it appeared um, there 
was a need for greater reflection and um, maybe something like uh, narrowing down to uh, one key topic uh, that interested them, uh, which could be different from student to student. But it's, uh, you know, sometimes when I see an answer where um, it's a whole bunch of stuff, it feels like they're just throwing everything at the wall and see what sticks <laughs> versus uh, expressing uh, what they felt was important. So, um, Uh, um, this uh, um, so uh, developing focus uh, might be a learning gap, quote unquote. And then I'll, um, I, I don't know if I, so here I didn't prepare individual student responses. I can't actually unload it here. Um, I guess the one thing you should watch out for is, so all this material that you will unload here, it'll be visible to other instructors at Peralta. So anything that um, impacts student privacy, you shouldn't unload. That's why for this file that I'm unloading, I've blurred out the names because um, <laughs> uh, we should be mindful of FARPA. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I think that's sufficient. Let me move on to the next step, reflection. Uh, so here, um, so you do only have this if there was a previous assessment of the same SLO. Uh, you might see this from three years ago. So if you don't see anything, you can just say NA. That's kind of the easiest thing to do. Um, and finally, the action plan. Oh, yeah, so I think um, uh, might be something like this. Uh, uh, I might adjust the question prompt to ask a student for a singular thesis statement. Uh, and uh, I think uh, I might um, Um, stay quieter breathing. Um, maybe other. Um, uh, it's so I'm putting other because I don't want to read, spend too much time <laughs> reading through each of these. Because uh, what I think, uh, what I should do is so this might fall under revised activities leading up to it. Um, so this is really for you. So if uh, uh, you can always choose other and describe what you want to do. And what I want to do is uh, give more guidance on uh, uh, structured uh, in paragraph structure writing uh, in the format of a, a thesis sentence per paragraph uh, followed by a few supporting statements. Uh, supporting sentences. Um, um, so that's what I'd like to do. Um, the sections to take beyond the course level? No, uh, maybe not at this time. Um, and the next assessment would be so. Again, I'm doing this a little bit behind. So this is assessment for 2020 fall. So it should really be assessed again three years from then, which would be 2023, three years from 20 fall. So oh, next fall, super behind. Uh, all right, so let me do that. And the attach files, this is just a tab that collects all the files that you've attached. And um, I've seen assessments at uh, a range of spectrum. Man many instructors don't upload anything. That's perfectly fine um, if you keep your own records and you don't need them here. So the really, the um, uh, whatever files you attach, it's uh, for uh, you or you know someone in your role three years from now. So whatever you feel is helpful for them, you upload it here. So I think that's uh, everything. I made sure to enter this. And um, so the, the system will make sure that you've answered all the questions before you can launch this proposal. And when everything's ready, then you should launch it. 
And when you launch it, what will happen? What will happen is it will go to the queue of your assessment coordinator. And because I'm the assessment coordinator for uh, STEM, <laughs> it comes to me. So let me show you what it looks like from your assessment coordinator's end. Um, so it shows up on their approvals queue. Uh, let me go to the approvals, and I can say, okay, uh, that looks good. Reviewed. Looks great. I usually put something in the comment always. Um, and here it's a little silly because I'm writing to myself. <laughs> That's fine. And I'll come in. You know, I don't know what happens after because uh, it, it used to go to our uh, go to our curriculum and assessment specialist. I don't think. Uh, um, let me see where it is now, so I can do search view, search for the proposal. Yeah, it's still in review. So um, I'll follow up on that. <laughs> so, um, but for what I want you to demonstrate in this recording, I think this is it. So again, to review, you create proposal, uh, find the proposal that matches the assessment level one, SLO assessment, and then you create it with some, uh, in the correct division department and with some title, uh, in like in physics 10, um, I'll, I'll create so uh, the draft that you create you can always uh, delete it so um, you know don't to worry too much about creating drafts <laughs> um, it's really when you launch that you can't delete it anymore and once you are here then um, just you just work your way through the questions it's designed in a way it's more narrative oriented and you just uh, answer um, each question one at a time and there's a description of each um, each question that you're answering as you go. So, uh, so thank you for watching this video and thank you for thank you in advance uh, for completing your SLO assessment. It's a um, accreditation requirement, and uh, on behalf of the college, I appreciate you very much for completing that. Thank you.